Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report. My name is Carlos Torres and along with Feral Vader, every week we check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Here we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Fred, hi, how are you this week? Carlos, I'm fantastic. It's uh, I'm in Ohio this week. We got beautiful weather. It's fantastic. 85 degrees today, a little breeze blowing. Gave golf lessons all day. Uh, been outside. Um, face looks a little red. Um, it's uh, it's just gorgeous here right now. Um, the uh, memorial starts this week down in Columbus, so that's always big. Um, I was going to go down there tomorrow, but I'm just too busy. I can't get away. I just I got too many things going on. So I hate missing the memorial. It, it you know I missed it a couple of years for COVID, and and I was going to go back this year, but I just got too much going on. I can't I can't get away. So. It's been really busy. It's been great weather. Um, got a lot of stuff going on the next few weeks. Going to be doing some traveling. But hey, we got a U.S. Women's Open coming up this week, and we want to talk about it a little bit, right? Of course. And you know, that's the life of the traveling person. You know, you doing so much stuff for the show, you know, making this more knowledgeable about everything. And we understand, you know, you have a lot of things in your plate. So we thank you for that. I mean, it's a sacrifice life. It is. One of us has to do it. And I'm I got to go to I got to go to Myrtle Beach for a few days, and I got to go to Georgia and Charleston and northeastern Georgia, and you know, I, it's just I I got stuff to do, Carlos. I'm so sorry, man. I, I'm just glad it's not me. I'm just glad. <laughs> it's not me. But anyway, you mentioned it. The champ the major championship this season is rolling on, and this week the LPGA's best is heading to North Carolina for the 77th staging of the U.S. Women's Open, a significant event for a number of reasons. It's signaling the first of a multi-year partnership with Promatica, which we mentioned at the beginning of the year. The 2022 Open features a total- And where's Promatica from, from, by the way? I don't know if you know this or not, but right no, here in Toledo, Ohio. Man, I, I don't know if this is the first of few things that you're gonna mention, because you always, have something about Toledo, Ohio, or, or you know, it's we the did center an interview. of the Gulf Universe. I, I, we I, did an interview I, with Randy Ustra, who is the president and CEO of uh, uh, Promedica, uh, last September uh, during the uh, during the Solheim Cup, because the Promedica was a big sponsor of the Solheim Cup. And uh, so, if anybody wants to see that, they can look back on our files and and uh, they can find that as well. And like you said, uh, thanks to that, the 2022 Open features a total prize purse of $10 million. I mean, to, yeah. to talk about that in the women's yeah. professional golf, that is amazing. That's the that's largest. That's big first. money for women's golf. That's, that's fantastic. That's and it's one of the biggest in women's sport. Okay, Not only in golf, it's in women's sports. It's one of the biggest ones. The tournament also returns to a historic host venue that will now set a new record for the most number of U.S. Opens for the women's held in at a, in, uh, at a venue while Annika Sorenstam makes her return to the event, Michelle Wee West is in a sort of a farewell bid, you know, uh, bang adieu to her playing career. And also, finally, we're going to see world number one, number two, Nelly Corda, making her return to play uh, following that discovery of the blood cloud. So it's great that we're going to have, have her here. Fred, this year's championship also received the most entries in tournament history a total of 1,874 entries. Now, entrants are from 46 of the United States and 57 countries around the globe. So it's going to be an important event. Definitely all these reasons that I say are marking history for the U.S. Uh, women's golf uh, events. So how about the U.S. Women's Open? Carlos, when you we talk about the 77th U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles in Pinehurst, we have to talk about Peggy Kirkbell. This is one of the great Donald Ross courses in the Pinehurst area. And Peggy Kirkbell and her husband, Warren, uh, bought this property uh, a long time ago and uh, operated it. And Peggy Kirk was one of the leading golf teachers and women's golf advocates in the country for a long, long time. Um, oh, and by the way, she was from Ohio, Carlos. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but she was from Finlay, just, you know, right near my hometown. Um, she won three Ohio amateurs. Um, like I say, she, you know, she was well known across the country as one of the great teachers 
of golf. Um, the family owns uh, Pine Needles. They own Mid Pines right across the street, which is one of my favorite golf courses anywhere in the world. Mid Pines, I could play that every day of the rest of my life and be totally happy. And the family also bought Southern Pines and just renovated it. And I have not played it since the renovation. I played it a few years ago. And everybody tells me since the renovation, it's absolutely fabulous now. So I can't wait to get back down there and see it. Um, but those three courses together, Pine Needles, Mid Pines, and Southern Pines are all owned by the family. And Peggy Kirk Bell's daughter, husband, uh, Pat McGowan, now runs the, uh, the corporation, now runs all the properties for the family. And uh, so it's a, it's a real golf family. Uh, McGowan is a, a former professional, and so it, it's all in the family. As you mentioned, uh, Annika won her second consecutive U.S. Women's Open uh, in 1996 here at Pine Needles. Uh, then um, uh, Carrie Webb won in 2001, and Christy Kerr won in 2007. This will be the fourth one that's been held there. A U.S. Senior Women's Open has also been held at Pine Needles won by Helen Alfredson in 2019. So um, it's, it, Pine Needles also went through a renovation the last couple of years. Uh, just interviewed uh, Phil Wirtz uh, a couple of weeks ago. That interview is also on Back Nine Report TV if you want to look at that. Phil is the CEO of the um, uh, uh, Convention Visitors Bureau there at Southern Pines, Aberdeen, and Pinehurst. And we talked quite a bit about pine needles uh, uh, during that interview as well and the, and the renovation that was done there. So Carlos, I, that's enough about the, you know, the history and the course there. Um, I, I just wanna give you a couple things, a couple notes that I have uh, about, that I think people should know maybe about the Women's Open that's coming up this week. Uh, as we both mentioned, Annika will be playing uh, here because she won the U.S. Senior Women's Open last year, uh, she gets the invitation to be in the in the U.S. Women's Open this year, and so she returns to a course she won on. This is the perfect course for Jin Young Ko, who is of course the number one player in the world. Fairways and greens is her mo. That's what's required at a USGA Championship, and nobody's better at it than Jin Young Ko. Could this be Lexi Thompson's best shot at winning a U.S. Women Open title? Well, she's 27. No, that's not old by any means, but she's been a top women's golfer since she was 14 years old. She only has one major title, the 2014 ANA. That was a long time ago. She probably has five more good years to win a U.S. Women's Open, but time is beginning to go short for her to win more majors. Who's you, Kim? Already has a win this year. Always seems to play well in big events. Don't overlook her. Nasa Hadaoka has been playing very well as of late. She likes the big stage, and she is fearless. Carlos, that's just a few of the notes that I have. I'll turn it back over to you. All right. So I just wanted also to, to say some things about the course, uh, Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club. Like I mentioned, it's going to host its fourth U.S. Women's Open this week. So it elevates the course to the top of the list of most frequent venues by the USGA for its national championship. You mentioned it, it was designed by prolific Scotsman Donald Ross, who lived in North Carolina region, Pine Needles open for play into 1928, and many believe it to be Ross's finest work, okay? You mentioned about uh, Hall of Famer Peggy Kirk Bell and her husband Warren. They purchased it in the 1950s, and uh, right now Pine Needles is one of America's top golf resorts was restored much closer to Ross's original work in the early 2000s when John Fott undertook a renovation with historical aerial photographs as his guide. If you have seen that, if not, just Google it. It was amazing the way that he did it. And that's what he used to guide himself and put it back to mostly what Donald Ross did. Now, they, like you mentioned, they once again updated it back in 2017 expanded the green surfaces for more pin positions at the hands of Kyle Franz. So Pine Needles will need, uh, will play to the par 71 this week. He's gonna measure 6,638 yards. And with the 131 yard 13 hole, I mean, third hole arguably is the standout of the property. That's the one that everybody's gonna be looking at. So Fred, not only does Pine Needles now stand alone with four years opens, 
It also both that impressive past champions you mentioned it, Sorenstam, Webb and Christy Kerr, and both Webb and Christy Kerr, uh, both uh, Webb and Sorenstam defended their titles right there. So amazing list there. You mentioned some players um, to look at, some players to watch. I am going to tell you about, first of all, Lexi Thompson. I mean, she definitely would have won it last year if it wouldn't have been by that meltdown. Uh, she has underperformed in her career so far, really for what we expected from her. Even though she hasn't won an event since 2019, this could well be the event where she finally crosses the finish line. And I expect her to take that that she had that experience that she has and take put on the back burner what happened last year. She definitely has to play to win here at the US Open. Uh, we mentioned about Nelly Corda. Of course, she's the world's number two. And in any normal situation, you would say, well, she has to be one of their favorites, but it's still, she hasn't played since February and it's a major, I don't know how her, I mean, you, you just need some competition before heading into this. But one thing that I know for sure is her uh, sister, Jessica, her preparation may have been overshadowed by her sister's uh, Nelly's return to action, but don't overlook Jessica because she's quietly looking an excellent bet. She finished second at the Chevron Championship, and this could finally be her moment to break her major talk. Okay, you got to look at Inby Park. I mean, she is one of the best when it comes to her game on the greens, and this is one of the primary requirements for major events, especially here at the U.S. Open. Notably, Inbe has already won it twice in her career, so she knows what it takes to win here. Another player that I have to watch is Lydia Cole. I mean, she's playing great. Uh, she's in great form as she won the Gamebridge LPGA earlier this year. She has won two majors, two major events in her career, and uh, this could be very well the, the week that she adds another to her cabinet. But my top two players to watch are Min Jae Lee. That's uh, the number two to me to watch. She's playing amazingly right now. Uh, she's leading the LPGA's race to the CME Globe after her superb start to the year. Might have quite enjoyed some extra rest after being bundled out of the match play early last week. So her failure to advance deep in Las Vegas resulted in just her second finish worse than T13 all year from 13 for eight starts. So that includes one win and two of the top fives. If you're looking for somebody that's hot, that is her. And of course, I got to go with Jean Young Ko. Uh, I mean, she's the favorite golfer this week. She recently won the HSBC's Women's Championship in March, therefore giving her form and her gameplay uh, the, the, the tools to be the favorite here to win the U.S. Open. But definitely two top stands since her last win might have been the high point in a period that maybe a lot of people are like, well, she doesn't look like she's playing at the form that she will. Well, <laughs> what we, what she has really spoiled us to, it may be like she's slowing down, but don't overlook that. She's twice a major winner, owner of seven top tens at the big events and just 26 years old. So I'm surprised that she isn't being, you know, talked about so much, but I would be surprised if she's in the mix at the end, Fred. Yeah. Um... A couple of things you mentioned there, um, Minji Lee, I, I didn't mention her earlier. I, I thought about her earlier. So you're exactly right. She is very hot right now. She's one of the best players, hottest players going right now in the women's game. So she is definitely someone to, to watch. Lydia Ko, we always like Lydia. And this is a perfect golf course for Lydia Ko. Perfect. This is right to her game, right? So uh, look for her to, to be up there at the end of the week. And then someone that I always think should do well at U.S. Women's Opens, and this could be a good course for her, Brooke Henderson. Uh, I, I think she could be somebody to watch this week as well. And, and Carlos, I just want to, we've got the best of the best here this week, right, in the Women's U.S. Open. There's 156 golfers in the field. 12 of them have won U.S. Women's Opens before, uh, including uh, Ihi G, uh, Aria Jadonagar, and, uh, you know, uh, Lee, uh, Jean Lee six. So, uh, so young you, there's a lot of big names in this event. Also 13 of the women in this field have been runner up in U S women's open. So, I mean, they've been right there. Somebody that we haven't mentioned, but somebody that's been playing pretty good the last year, Stacy Lewis, this would be a good golf course for her as well. 
She's been a runner up in the US women's, but never quite won one. Um, Lexi is also in that category. Um, so you've got US women's mid amateur champions. You've got US women, women's amateur champions in the field, five of them. US women's amateurs runners up. So you've got really great women's players in this field is the point that I'm making. And with the top female LPGA players there, this makes for an exciting tournament on a wonderful golf course, Carlos. It does. And uh, just to add to your thought about Brooke Anderson, my only concern with, with her is, you know, she she had to withdraw recently from an illness and hasn't been playing after she returned. It's missed a cut twice. Uh, she's one of my favorite players, but I think, you know, I'm still worried a little bit about the lingering effects of that, of that uh, injury. Same yeah. thing with Nelly. I mean, otherwise, yeah, I mean, it should be on the top five list all yeah. the time. But uh, yeah. definitely, that I wouldn't be surprised if Brooks, Brooke uh, Henderson finally comes back and, and wins it. She's that talented. But like you mentioned, the list is 156 players, and that is how long the list of players with chances here. That's what the beauty of the LPGA is. But Fred... Just to wrap it up, I mean, where can we watch this tournament? NBC has pretty much the coverage and also some's on USA Network and some is on Peacock. Um, so you've got uh, USA Network and Peacock have the coverage on Thursday, June 2nd and Friday, June 3rd. So the early rounds on USA and Peacock. Uh, coverage begins on Peacock 1 to 3 then it's on USA from 3 to 8 p.m. So you got five hours of live coverage on USA on the first two rounds. All three platforms have weekend coverage. Uh, Peacock will stream exclusively on Saturday from noon to 1. They just have an hour. Uh, and also USA picks it up from 1 to 3 before it slips over to NBC for the network coverage 3 to 6 on, uh, uh, 3 to 6 on Saturday and 3 to 7 on Sunday. Uh, you could also live stream on Peacock if, if you want to do that. But there's also featured in USGA On Demand um, that you can watch. Featured groups are on the USGA On Demand app uh, on their connected TV dives. So you got Roku, Apple, you know, all that stuff. And then you've also got the U.S. Women's app um, that you can go to and get real-time probability tracking, scorecard highlights. Uh, there's also a game you can have U.S. Women's Open pick them uh, if you want. They're going to get prizes in that strokes gain and some different stats and stuff around there. So a lot of different ways to watch this, Carlos, live streaming on an app, on traditional network coverage, Peacock and USA. It's, it's all over the place, which is good. Women's golf need it. My only my only complaint is that it bounces from Peacock to USA to NBC. I, I don't like that. I wish it'd just be one place. and You just watch it. But that's the way things are today, so we gotta we gotta go with it. Gotta get used to it, man. There's no excuse now for not watching. You have all the places wherever you go, you're gonna have ways to to watch it. So anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. This is gonna be an amazing tournament. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're certainly we will. So thank you for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in the golf news and information. You remember to subscribe to our channel. The description of how to do it is right there on the description below us. Thank you for joining us.